This is Information on the Environment of the Eastern Woodlands, Student Handout 3.2a. Physical Features. This region covers a territory from the Atlantic Ocean eastward across the Appalachians to the Mississippi Valley and southward to Virginia and North Carolina. The region includes the stormy Atlantic Coastal Plain as well as the Adirondack and Appalachian Mountains. It is an area filled with river valleys and lakes. While the region is made up of many kinds of physical land features, the one thing all the land has in common is a thick covering of lush, productive forest. Climate. This area has four distinct seasons, ranging from warm, humid summers to cold, snowy winters. It rains and snows moderately throughout the year. Water availability. Lakes, rivers, and streams are plentiful. The largest lakes in North America, the five Great Lakes, are found in this region. Animal life. Animals such as black bears, white-tailed deer, wolves, beavers, cotton-tailed rabbits, red and gray foxes, and squirrels live in this heavily forested region. Many bird species such as wild turkeys, quail, and pheasants can also be found in the forests. The lakes and streams are filled with fish and draw waterfowl like ducks and geese. Vegetation Both deciduous trees like the sugar maple and coniferous trees like the red cedar grow in the forests of the eastern woodlands. There are some small grassy meadows, but the area is mostly covered with trees. This is Native Americans in their environment, the eastern woodlands. Student handout 3.2D. The Algonquins were a group of Native Americans who shared a similar language and lived around the Great Lakes region. The largest groups lived near or along the streams, rivers, and lakeshore because it was here that the most animals could be hunted and that crops could be grown on fertile plains. Housing. Algonquins lived in many types of houses, but their most common dwelling was the wigwam. The typical wigwam had an oval framework of poles bent into a dome shape and covered with slabs of elm bark or strips of birch bark sewn together. Sometimes the winter coverings were mats made of cattail stalks, which provided more warmth than bark. The fire was built in the center of the wigwam on the earth floor. Platforms around the sides served as sleeping and sitting spaces. Food most of the year, the, Algon the southern Algonquins lived in villages near rivers where they grew crops. Women tended small plots of land in the forest. Their main crop was corn, but they also grew squashes and beans. In the wintertime, the Algonquins left their villages in small bands to track game. They hunted deer, rabbit, squirrel, beaver, and various birds such as turkey, duck, and partridge. They also fished the rivers, streams, lakes, and ponds of the region using harpoons, hooks, nets, and traps to catch the fish. Fish and meat were hung on racks over a smoldering fire for a long time to allow the smoke to penetrate. This smoking process preserved the fish and meat so that it would last through winters and long journeys. Clothing Clothing was simple. During warmer months, the men wore only breechcloths. Even in the winter, men wore only moccasins, leggings, breechcloths, and robes. Women wore a skirt made from a rectangular skin wrapped around the waist. The edge of the skirt was cut in fringes and sometimes decorated with porcupine quills. On occasion, a jacket was worn as an upper garment. Recreation. The Algonquins had elaborate feasts to celebrate special occasions. During this time, both men and the women decorated themselves with paint and jewelry. Sometimes they tattooed their faces. Long hair was admired and might be greased to give an added luster. Then a number of men plucked out some hair and cut the remainder to form distinctive styles. Values. The Algonquins believed that all things in their environment were spirits. They believed, for example, that the sun and the moon were beings to whom they talked and paid great attention. They also believed in the power of dreams and visions. They believed they could learn how to cure illnesses or discover which path to take in life by paying close attention to their dreams. Mothers asked their children in the morning if they had dreamed, for dreams were to be carefully considered each day. Native Americans of the Eastern Woodlands. This is from the textbook. 
The eastern woodlands cultural region reached from the Mississippi River eastward to the Atlantic Ocean and from Canada to North Carolina. Here, winter snows and summer rains produced endless forests, lakes, and streams. Two language groups emerged in this region. In most of the territory, people spoke Algonquin languages. In New York and around the southern Great Lakes lived the Iroquois-speaking groups described in this section. Plentiful Woods The forest provided most of what Iroquois people needed to live. For food, hunters prowled through the forest to track deer. Men also hunted bears, trapped beavers, caught birds in nests, and speared fish. Women gathered fresh greens, nuts, and berries. They made syrup by boiling down sap from maple trees. Instead of walking through the thick forest, Iroquois often paddled log and bark canoes along lakes and rivers. Because waterways were all... Because waterways also provided fish and drinking water, the Iroquois built their villages nearby. Each village had dozens of sturdy log-framed houses covered with elm bark. Such long houses were usually about 20 feet wide and over 100 feet long. Several related families lived in sections of the longhouse. Women Farmers To clear a space for farming, Iroquois men burned away trees and underbrush. Women did the rest. After hoeing the soil, they planted corn, sometimes several varieties. Around the corn stalks, they let beans twine. Squash stayed near the ground, keeping down weeds and holding moisture in the soil. When the planting was done, women tanned deer skins to make skirts, capes, and moccasins, which were soft shoes. They ground corn with wooden sticks in hollowed-out tree trunks or between two stones. In the fall, they stored the harvest, often in large bark bins in the longhouses. Iroquois crops included sunflowers, tobacco, and many vegetables that are still planted in American gardens today. The caption says, Dense forests are home to deer, beavers, and other wildlife and provided food, clothing, and shelter for the Native Americans of the eastern woodlands.